guys, I'm Becca. And I'm Lutz. And today, we're going to talk to you about heat-related emergencies because we live in western New York and right now it's about 95 degrees outside and miserable. And we've been playing a lot of airsoft games on weekends that have been equally hot and miserable this year. And some parts of the U.S. are insanely hot Even with hotter. garbage cans melting in the street. So. so we figured that covering some heat emergencies might be helpful information for you guys. First a disclaimer, we're not first aid instructors, it's just going to be a brief overview of some basic first aid topics and skills. Um, we're demonstrating speaking based purely on our own experience in the medical field, and it is not a substitute for any kind of formal training. Uh, Becca here, tell I, about our history. I got my EMT certification in 2008 and kept it up for a few years and then let it lapse while I went to school to become an RN. I've been an RN in an ICU for a couple of years now. And that's what I do. And I also got my EMT in 2008. Uh, I've worked for three, four ambulance companies, done some volunteer firefighting. Um, so applicable stuff. Uh, Definitely he has on. more hands-on in the field experience for than I do care, for emergencies. Anyway. Yes. But we both but have the same, same basic training. We were in the same EMT same class, class yeah. together. So, so uh, the whole kind of the way this all came about for this new segment is we've noticed a rise in players, especially younger players, but really everyone who uh, you'll see them at fields carrying trauma shears or tourniquets or a number of different pieces of medical equipment. And in talking with these people, we found out they, they have no idea what they're for or even what they're called half the time. Trauma shears are not scissors. They're not scissors. They're not for cutting arteries or anything else. They're oh. for clothes and yes. that is it. Um, <laughs> Expose. So a couple things I've seen people carry who told me they didn't know what it was. Uh, I'm just going to show you some examples. If you have these and you don't know that they were called this, don't carry them. Please. Uh, it's an OPA, or an oropharyngeal airway. It's for keeping your tongue from slipping back in your throat. But again, you need to have medical training to use this. If you don't have that training, don't carry it on you. An NPA, nasal pharyngeal airway. Very similar thing to the OPA, but a little bit different route. And then the big one we see on everyone, tourniquet. Not technically with new research, they're not super harmful if you keep them on for really long. But that being said, a patient shows up at a hospital in the ED with a tourniquet on and there's no time on it and no one knows who the person was that put it on. It creates a whole list of questions and the ED is going to be beside themselves. So <laughs> if you don't have training in these, I would suggest don't carry them. Uh, we've heard the excuse. Well, I carry it so that other people who have training can use it. Trust me, the people who have the training will have their own equipment or they'll be able to improvise and make do. We don't need you to have things for us. We're right. set. My, uh, our team, gun gamers in general, I think we have something like between us, a couple, there's about four, four or five EMTs, like a handful of firefighters, all these other first responders. We have former uh, combat lifesavers. Those guys... And me, like, we'll carry a tourniquet, but we also have had extensive training in their use and how they're supposed to appropriately be applied and all that. So, again, just cautionary tale. Just yeah, don't use so it if you're particular. That's basically why we just started, decided to make these videos is just so we can talk about these kinds of things with you guys and share some of our experience and also encourage anybody who is interested to go and get training. Go get yeah. formal training. Go get EMT certification. Just do basic CPR, first aid. I, I recommend every single person should have CPR training at the very least. It's uh, a lot of places will help pay for it too. A lot of places, depends on state and all that, but a lot of places even do free or very low cost CPR or first aid training if you live in that town, stuff like that. Especially around here in New York, yeah. I know we've got that. So shop around and get yourself trained up so that if anything happens when you're out there playing on the field or even just going about everyday life, you can help. Um, that's the other thing. Uh, what we're going to be going over in these segments will actually be easily used uh, kind of as a cross training for, it's all going to be airsoft kind of stuff that could happen, but it also applies to hiking. It applies to everyday life. Um, so I think it's, it's stuff that anyone could use and it's really helpful. Um, so all that being said. <laughs> all, right. all right, so... Heat emergencies, we're going to start by talking about prevention. And the biggest thing with prevention is keep yourself hydrated. 
And with that, that does not mean just the day of. Um, with mm -hmm. Airsoft, you have the luck of knowing days, weeks, months ahead of time when it's going to be. I'm seriously talking a week before the game. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water that week. Make sure you're drinking eight cups a day. Um, and not just soda, not for 21 and over, not just beer. It's not hydration. <laughs> Come on. Um, yeah. <laughs> drink, drink water. Um, drink water, eat your carbs, keep up your strength. Um, come game day, drink more that day. If you show up to the game drinking a Red Bull, we hate you. You're going to die, and it's your own fault. If you come to a Gun Gamers game when it's hot, you will hear myself and Eric screaming drink water just about every <laughs> seven minutes. So you're going to know. And they'll kick you out of a game if they see you not drinking water and they're worried about you. We, uh, <laughs> we have had a video in the past with Eric and Garrett, actually, last year, because Garrett became the victim of heat exhaustion at a game. Um, although we joke about it because he was kind of out of it and all that, it, it, it is a serious emergency. Uh, luckily, like I said, we in the past we have many EMTs on the team. We were able to treat him and deal with his nonsense. Uh, got him out of his clothes, and, well, out of some layers, and got him. You cool got Garrett off. naked, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but so we're gonna start with yeah, yeah prevention. So prevention, hydration. Um, yeah, hydration is key. Not. Not just water, you want to get some electrolytes in there too, but you don't want just electrolytes. Don't drink just Gatorade. No. I generally like to dilute my Gatorade with water. Matt says that he likes to have a two yeah. to one ratio. Uh, two to one ratio is great. If you uh, have like two liters of water in a hydro, have, I don't know, rough estimation, two bottles of Gatorade is pretty fair equal. It's not too bad. Um, a good example of this is Radon Rostov two, three years ago with Milson West. We were down in South Carolina in July, so that was a mistake for a New Yorker. <laughs> um, I think the heat index was something like 110 degrees, and it was at night, when it's dark, it was like 95. There was just no escaping the heat. We were chugging down hot gallons of water, because there was just no way to keep it cold. The staff just couldn't keep it all cold. Uh, I mean, I was drinking a couple gallons a day, and I think I went to the bathroom twice in 40 hours. So that's bad. <laughs> I was flushing out all the electrolytes. Um, we were actually we had some electrolyte pills, which worked. Uh, Gatorade also works, and you'd feel that cramping in your hands. I'm sure some of you have felt it. Your fingers feel fat. You can't bend them well. They're kind of stiff. That's a lack of electrolytes. Get some, <laughs> but not too many because you'll end up cramping like, even worse. You'll even overcompensate. Yeah. So yeah, just it's a balance. Some Gatorade, not too much. Lots of water, not too much. <laughs> so, hydra yeah, hydration is the biggest prevention. And think about what you're going to be wearing on game day. Don't wear your full weighted training plates and yeah, if your real steel, like, weighted K-pot. And <laughs> don't carry your M60. Yeah, um, what I see a lot is it'll be a 100 degree, like a 90, 100 degree kind of heat index day. And you see people running around with full plate carriers, a blouse under that, so it's not even a combat shirt, so it doesn't breathe. They've got full length pants, they've got the combat boots with the pants blouse, so there's no air moving in. Then they got a helmet, and they got face masks, and it's not even a mesh face mask. And then you're basically just putting yourself in a hazmat suit. <laughs> it's like running around in a Tyvek suit. Don't do that. You can be really <laughs> tactical and still have lighter weight gear. Watch all of Eric's videos. He you can loves be so to run cool. that lightweight stuff. He <laughs> loves it. Dress like Eric, and you won't die from heat exhaustion. Um, so, so the the things we're going to cover the two big ones are heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Um, I want to be real clear that those are two very different things. Um, I hear a lot of times a lot of players will say someone's kind of tired. They're feeling a little nauseous or something. They're like, oh, they have heat stroke. They have heat stroke. Oh my god, it's it, it no. might be, but probably isn't. If they're still fully up and walking and they're just tired and thirsty, that's not heat stroke. It's probably not even heat exhausted. Yeah. They're probably yeah. just tired and thirsty. Heat stroke <laughs> is a legitimate medical emergency. And you need to get them to a hospital. Yes. If you consider your brain as like a computer CPU, it's overheating. And that's it's really shutting bad. down. It's really bad on a computer. It's really bad on a person. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to let Becca start going through uh, symptoms of heat exhaustion. Yeah. So heat exhaustion is sometimes... It sometimes precludes heat stroke, sometimes it happens on its own, um, and basically you'll be running around all day, you'll be super hot, you'll get to the point that you're 
super hot, but your skin starts to feel kind of cool and clammy. You're really sweaty, but you're kind of on the cooler side. Your heart rate's kind of on the lower side. You just feel crappy. You you're feel tired. That you're dizzy. In your chest. You're kind of nauseous. Yeah. Your heart's just pounding. You're weak. You just feel crappy and exhausted and hot. If you get to that point, you need to sit down. You need to cool down. You need to take off everything that is making you hot. Get down to the fewest amount of clothes you are comfortable wearing in front of people. If you're on and Gun Gamers, that means boxers. I'm, I mean, just, yeah, that's fine. We're a very loving family. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so get down to as little as you can. Get hydrated. Get cold water bottles. Put them near your core. Put them on your chest. Put them in your armpits, in your groin, and just try to lower your temperature. Also, get in shade. Get yeah, out of the sun. Yeah, get out of the sun. Yep. Um, and heat exhaustion is a medical emergency still, but sometimes you can kind of deal with it before it gets to the point that a person has to go to the hospital. But if at any point somebody starts to have any kind of change in their level of consciousness, they're dizzy, they're slurring, call 911. It's just better to be on the safe side. Like we said in our last video, it's better to have the resources and get people help if they need it than to not call and it to be too late and their brain to be fried mm -hmm. and they're seizing on the ground and you're mm -hmm. like, well, crap, we should have called for help. So, <laughs> that's <all> correct. <laughs> with, with that, um, a simple test, if you don't know the person, like if you know the guy, you're going to see he's acting weird. That's not how, you know, that's not how Eric acts. He's always weird, but that's not how he acts all the time. Um, so, a good test for like a stranger, if they seem kind of out of it, a lot of times what you'll see with this, if it's moving towards the heat stroke category, is the guy will kind of walk kind of aimlessly. Um, they're, yeah, they're kind of wandering, they're kind of confused, dragging their feet, kind of pulling at their collar. I've, I've seen it a bunch of times. Um, what you can ask them, kind of pull them aside, just ask some really basic questions. Ask them who's the president, what year is it, what month is it, and uh, a good one is just they have to do like a fraction of thinking. How many quarters in $1.25? If they can answer like three of those, they're doing okay. If they can answer like one and the others take ten minutes to think about, they're not doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got to cool them down. Yeah. So that's kind of heat exhaustion. You're cold, you're clammy, you just, you're not doing good. Then the next category is heat stroke. Sometimes heat stroke will happen if they had heat exhaustion and didn't get out of the sun, didn't cool down, sometimes heat stroke can come on on its own without really having any of that cold, clammy, slow, pounding heart rate feeling that you would have had with heat exhaustion. Sometimes heat stroke just, it just happens. And you are going to go from sweating like a waterfall to being bone dry. You will not sweat anymore. Your skin is going to feel like it's on fire. You are going to be a million degrees. Your mm -hmm. body temperature is going to be over 104 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. Your Which, heart rate's going to be through the roof. I mean, most of us don't carry thermometers, but what? do the old mom Hot. thing. Hot. Put your hand to their forehead <laughs> or their chest. Chest is actually better. Hot. Um, if they're just hot as hell and there's no sweat, that is two huge indications. Yeah. Again, with Rostov, it was dark. It was. I had to use a flashlight to find the kid. It's 10 o'clock at night, and we had a 17-year-old kid that was, like, falling over himself in the path trying to strip off layers who had stopped sweating for 20 minutes and decided not to tell anyone. Yeah. He got to go to the hospital. Free trip. Yeah. <laughs> so. Stopping sweating is yeah. a bad sign. Yeah. You're not stopping sweating because you are getting cooler. If you're right. still running around in the sunlight and you stop sweating, not good. No. Um, so stopping sweating, vomiting, you're going to go from the queasiness and nausea that you might have had with heat exhaustion to you are actually puking. Anything you try to drink, you're just going to puke it up. It's going to be very unpleasant. You're going to be dizzy. You're going to be looking like you're drunk. You're going to be walking into walls. You can't stand up straight. You're going to be slurring words. These are all possible symptoms. With, uh, with the throwing up part, uh, we forgot to mention before, but kind of falls into there. Uh, when you're rehydrating, uh, don't chug it. Don't take yeah. a bottle of water and just hammer it down. Because then you Sip might it. puke just because right. it's Cause too much. It's too much. Your body just can't <laughs> absorb that that fast. Um, and it's kind of a shock when you chug a bunch of cold water yeah. into a hot stomach. It's the other thing, just room temperature water is fine. Yeah. It doesn't have to be ice water. Yeah. You'll cool down. Just give it two minutes. Yeah. Promise. Um, if you've been playing Airsoft all day and you realize you haven't peed since the morning when you got there, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that Drink means you're not hydrating enough. Stop, sit down, get out of the sun. Also get personal for a minute. If your pee is dark, dark yellow, 
You're not drinking enough. Or if it looks like apple juice, that's yeah. bad. Drink more water. <laughs> it should be clear. Um, let's see. So more heat stroke symptoms if it gets bad enough because your brain is frying. The person could start seizing. Yes. Um, and that's really the that's the high end of terrible. Yep, that's, that's not super likely to happen if as long as we're looking out for each other. Yeah. Watch people. Yeah. You know? Look out for your friends. Look out for your teammates. Look out for that random guy who doesn't seem to have any teammates. Be like, hey, buddy, do you need to sit down? Yeah. Yes. Sit him down. Be his friend now. Mm -hmm. um, and on on the note of seizures, um, if someone at a game starts having a seizure, do not put anything in their mouth. Do not try to restrain them. Don't restrain them. them. Let them go. They literally will work through it. That is actually That's, medically how we deal with yep. that now. They have to complete it or they have to have an anti-seizure medication, which no one there is going to have. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. 911. Yep. Call for an ambulance, man. Yeah. Uh, anything else with that? I think... I think that's most of the symptoms, and I think as we've gone through, we've kind of talked about the treatments. Treatment: get out of the sun, get naked. Yeah. Cold, get cold on your core. Cold water bottle on your chest, yeah. armpits, groin. Yeah. Drink. If somebody is having any kind of diminished level of consciousness, they're not making sense. They're slurring. Do not try to make them drink water, um, because there's a chance they could pass out while drinking and then choke and yeah. then die because they choked and. They will yeah, cool down just as well <laughs> if you take their shirt off and just pour water over them. Yes. Pour water over them, put ice packs or chilled uh, water bottles, like you said, armpits, neck, groin. Yeah. That will cool a person down quick. That's another one we've had. Yeah. We had a guy who was in the service lots of years when he was younger. Yep. yep. And he was in a lot better shape then. He wasn't like a big guy. Yeah, he but, was in Panama. And yeah. But he decided he was going to wear full kit, top to bottom, weighted plates. The guy hadn't been in this kind of stuff in 20 years. And he's like 45 yeah. at this point. Um, it's 95 was, degrees out. He was not prepared for that. He was falling over. And we got him over to our aid station and just put ice packs in everywhere. Mm -hmm. Cooled him down about five minutes. Yeah. He was fine. Yep. He had to take so, the rest of the day off. Yep. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. So again... Look out for each other. Take care of each other. This is, you know, I, I know it's a game and we're playing against the other team and uh, those jerks. <laughs> work with you. Work with each other. You see someone acting weird, go tell staff. Go find. If you're playing with us, come find one of us. Like I yeah. said, 50% of us are medically trained to deal with it. We Someone's may seem advocate. like jerks, but we're all pretty friendly and approachable when you nice. actually come up to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's about it for yeah. all so that's our little spiel on heat-related illnesses. Hopefully you can take away something from it. Take care of yourself. Take care of your friends. Drink water. Drink water. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, it's been fun, and we'll see you with our next video. Bye. Bye.